Namaste. So this verse, text seven of the Agni Brahmana, the second section of the first chapter of Brihadaranya Upanishad, summarizes the first two Brahmanas, the Ashvamedha Brahmana and the Agni Brahmana. And it shows the result of successful performance of the horse sacrifice, which is that one becomes death, Hiranyagarbha, or Lord Brahma, Virat, the sum total of all living entities, and thus becomes the eater of everything. The horse sacrifice is a means to the meditation on this truth. Not that anyone can perform the horse sacrifice externally these days, huh? that's not within our power, but we can perform it through meditation. And this is called Manasa Puja. And it is praised in many scriptures as a way to attain things that are not possible to attain by physical means, external performance of sacrifice, but can be performed by internal meditation on the same things. So the meaning of the horse sacrifice is basically, I am Hiranyagarbha. I am death, destroyer of the worlds. And as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I have come to engage all people. More than that, death engages all beings, irrespective of whether they're human or not. So death is the ultimate sacrifice in which one is eaten by the gods or by the principal god, the original god in the universe, Virat. So this is the way to become Virat. If one is not addicted to a small concept of identity, an individual self, a separate being, or separate identity, but one becomes all. One becomes identical with all. I'll never forget one time in Tiruvannamalai, I had been doing a lot of sadhana, a lot of worship and meditation. And one time I just stepped out of my room and I saw this beautiful vista of the hill, Arunachala Hill, and the surrounding fields and countryside and villages and town and so on. I could see everything from where I was. The temple, you know, everything. <laughs> and I had this striking realization that I am all this. I am all. I am everyone. I am Brahman. Of course, Hiranyagarbha is not Brahman, not directly. Only indirectly, he is Brahman as the first living being in the universe. So he is the one who kicks off the process of creation and the uh, creation of the planetary systems and all the species of living beings and so on by creating the cosmic egg. Hiranya Garba. Hiranya means a gold. Garba means egg. So when this egg is broken, then Brahma takes birth and Brahma is fire, the mode of passion incarnate, Rajoguna. And then he takes the material elements created earlier by Virat and fashions all the planetary systems and worlds and the different beings populating them and so on. 
So this goes back to the very origin of the universe, even before the creation of the planetary systems, before the creation of different species even. And to the seed of everything. And when that seed enters the material universe, the material elements, especially the element of water, derived from the perspiration of Virat, worshiping himself, that becomes this golden egg. And so we can go back, back, back to the previous life. How did Hiranyagarbha become so? How did Virat take birth as the sum total of all beings? That's an extremely exalted birth. How did he make it? He performed the horse sacrifice in a previous life, either physically or by meditation, doesn't matter. The result is the same, that in the next life, one is born as Virat. As Shankara says in the purport, he dies once, but never dies again. Why? Because he has become death. Death never dies, isn't it? So this is the stage at which one simply merges into Brahman at the end of the universe. Now one can join with Virat. One can become Hiranyagarbha through this meditation. And one who knows this, the Upanishad says in several verses, one who knows how the Ark of Fire got its name, how the Ashvamedha sacrifice got its name, and so on. He gets this result automatically. Now, when the Upanishad says he knows this, that doesn't mean verbal knowledge, vidya, it means jnana, realized knowledge. One has to do the meditation. One has to do the practice. Now, this is not for the, uh, the glib, <laughs> phony, so-called uh, Advaitins who simply pretend to meditate. <laughs> you have to actually meditate. Well, what does that mean? Withdrawing the senses from their objects and concentrating on the self within. We've been over this in numerous videos in the past. I'm not going to go through it again in detail. But this pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses, is something we all do every night when we fall asleep. But then we are not doing it out of our will. In actual meditation, one withdraws the senses by one's will. And how do you withdraw the senses? By meditation on God, in any form, in any aspect. And Brahma Sutra gave so many meditations as Brahman as water, Brahman as fire, Brahman as air, Brahman as space. Even there's a meditation on Brahman as earth, Prithivi. And Brahman as consciousness, Brahman as the mind, Brahman as the sun, as the moon, and so on. There are so many meditations. Why is this? The object is irrelevant. The intention is what creates the result. And if the intention is to realize Brahman through meditation on any form, any object, then one attains that result. Maybe not immediate, maybe not directly, but indirectly over many, many times of meditation, many, many even births of meditation. 
But the easiest and most direct form of meditation is this horse sacrifice, this meditation on Virat. Because from Virat, it's only one step further to Brahman, the unconditioned Brahman. Now, we could conceive of Virat as the conditioned Brahman, the one who is everything. And that can take several different forms, as Brahma, as Vishnu, as Devi, the goddess, and all her extensions uh, in various forms. Or it can be direct on Brahman itself. Again, the object doesn't matter. The intention is what gives the result. So that's why I made a separate video to discuss all this, because this is really a, a huge scope in these first two brahmanas. The Ashvamedha brahmana, which is only two shlokas, describes the sacrifice itself. And then the Agni brahmana, which is concluded in this seventh shloka, describes the process, the uh, change in consciousness that occurs by identification with Hiranyagarbha. And you know, it's not so far-fetched to think of oneself as Hiranyagarbha, because for us to exist as we are, even in these bodies, requires the existence of the entire universe. We need air, we need water, we need earth, we need fire. We need all the material elements. We need space. We need time, cause and effect, and so on and so on. And we went through a deep discussion of cause and effect back in the Ashvamedha Brahmana that shows that the effect is present in the cause and the cause is present in the effect. So if we are, as human beings, the effect of Hiranyagarbha, that means Hiranyagarbha is present within us as cause, as the efficient cause and the material cause. And our humanity, our human beingness, is simply the final cause, which is the aim or result of it all. So we can trace this back within ourselves to the original cause, because the cause is there within us. But we have to be willing to give up all of our false identifications with the ego, the body, the mind, possessions, designations, attachments, and so on and so forth. All these upadis that limit us to an individual existence, and we have to be ready to merge with the totality of all existence. So, like I said, this is not so far-fetched because that totality is necessary for our existence, even as an individual, even as a human being. So once we realize this, and this is not a weekend workshop exercise, this is a lifelong process of sadhana by which one realizes one's identity with the all, everything, all beings that exist. And one who realizes this then is on the doorstep of Brahman, the unconditioned Brahman, because the next step back to the original cause is very easy. It's just the unmanifestation of this original being, Virat. So the scope and the, and the reach and the ambition of this Upanishad is unparalleled. I don't think there's any other literature I have read that, I mean, right from the start, you know, from the get-go, its scope and its ambition is so huge that 
it leads to the highest realization that can be attained by rites, by rituals, or even by a conventional type of meditation, and which is one step away from realization of the ultimate, the unconditioned Brahman, which is the cause of everything and the source of all life. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.